हेलो एवरी वन कैसे हैं आप लोग आवा यू गाइज आई होप एवरी थिंग इज फाइन एंड योर प्रेपरेशन आर स्मूथ फॉर द एग्जाम्स दिस वीडियो इज फॉर द सी एम ए फाइनल स्टूडेंट्स फॉर पेपर नंबर सेवेंटीन दैट इज कॉस्ट एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑडिट दिस इज फॉर ऑल दो स्टूडेंट्स हु आर स्टडिंग एज पर द न्यू सिलेबस टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी टू यू गाइज ऑलरेडी नो दैट in all your subjects and particularly when i talk about your paper number 17 institute has included new topics to make your syllabus the latest as per the latest hot topics going in the audit area like forensic audit information system security audit esg audit anti money laundering so all these are new areas you know which have come in the field of auditing and which are very important in the current era right so institute has tried to make the syllabus as per the latest developments in audit in these lectures i am just trying to give you an overall idea and overview of these topics so that your preparation becomes easier and you at least get to know what these topics are and a flow in all the chapters i have already uploaded videos on esg audit forensic audit if you haven't watched those yet go and watch those i am sure it will be very helpful to you guys ma'am aaj ke class mein kya hone wala hai aaj ke class mein you guys know from the title of the video we are going to do issa that is information systems and security audit all right so let me quickly sh show you what we are going to cover in this chapter the institute has different bifurcations of the topics i have made it according to me so that it gets easier i have divided the topics uh, in a uniform manner you can say so that we can just go through the chapter as per these topics that have been divided so first we are going to study the meaning of is audit the steps in is audit difference between security audit and risk assessment compliance and security framework which is given as per rbi so this is particularly for the banking sector cyber security and cyber forensics what what are the meanings of those two terms whether they are the same or they are different we are going to study that objectives of is audit why it is done what is the scope of is audit very important what are the is audit approaches how an auditor actually goes to the field and conducts this is audit cats c a a t that is computer assisted audit tools or audit techniques is audit methodologies sub system factoring and framework for conducting is audit so these are the 12 topics that we'll be covering ma'am study material no worries we are just following your institute study material so you can quickly open your institute study material to chapter number 13 that is information systems and security audit let us start what is this information system security audit as the name suggests it is the audit of the information systems you guys know that today is the era the modern era is of data everything is in data the data is considered as the biggest asset for any company so from where does the data come or where does the data get stored information systems the information systems have to be very secure in order to keep the company secure right so the audit of this security of the information systems is nothing but your information system security audit so we just break the term and we try to analyze the meaning right let's mark the definition an information system security audit issa it is an independent review we know that audit is an independent examination right similarly issa audit issa is also an independent review and examination of what it's not your financial statement audit that we will conduct the audit of financial statements or it's not the cost audit that we will conduct the audit of cost records it is the information systems audit so independent review and examination of what of system records activities of the system and the related documents so audit kin cheezon ki hogi system records activities and the related documents 
Why is this audit done? These audits are intended to improve the level of information security, avoid improper information security designs and optimize the efficiency of security safeguards and security processes. Any company which uses, which makes use of information technology, information systems, which every company does in today's date, has some security protocol, security processes, but whether they are functioning efficiently or not, whether it is uh, uh, effective or not, it is achieving the goal that it is required to achieve or not, okay, whether the system design is correct or there needs to be a change, is a con the auditor will come and analyze, conduct a review of all those and give a report. Ma'am, ye sab audit pehle to nahi hota tha, fir ab kyun? Because of increase in information technologies use and also increase in cyber crimes. Everyday newspaper headlines or in everyday affairs, you will be hearing the attacks, ransomware attacks, ho rahe hai, malware attacks, viruses, threats, cyber threats, phishing. All these are cyber crimes or you can say cyber uh, threats which different companies or different individuals face. So, to protect the companies and individuals against these attacks, against these cyber crimes, the cyber security audit or the information system security audit is conducted. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Sometimes, you know, laws and regulations also specify different companies to get their IS audited, to get their information systems audited. So, this information system security audit also works as a compliance mechanism. Because regulator ne bol diya ki information systems audit karana padega. So, when the company does that, it basically complies with the given regulation. Alright, or the law. An IT security audit is a comprehensive examination and assessment of an enterprise's information security system. Conducting regular audits will help the auditor and the company to identify weak spots and vulnerabilities in IT infrastructure to verify the security controls, ensure regulatory compliance and more. An audit can help to answer the following critical questions. Are there any weak spots and vulnerabilities in the current security? Is, are there any extraneous tools or processes that don't perform a useful security function? Some extra unnecessary tools or uh, processes are there which are not providing any kind of security. Are, is the company equipped to fend off security threats and recover business capabilities in the in, in case of any system outage? Koi attack ho gaya, to kya company is in, in a state to defend itself? Business continuity plans kya company ke? If security flaws are discovered, then what concrete actions can be taken to address them? These are the questions that this audit, the IS audit answers. A thorough audit can also help re to remain in compliance with the data security laws. Is it clear? So, that is the introduction of your IS audit. I hope it's clear. Next important topic is the steps in IT security audit. Basically, I am using this bell icon to remind me that this is an important area from where a question may be asked in the exam and I need to focus on. So, you can give your own. You can just give a star mark or highlight with a different colored pen. It's up to you. So, there are five steps in IS audit. The first step is define the objectives. Why the audit needs to be conducted? What are the goals? Okay, the roles and responsibility, uh, basically the goals that the audit auditor needs to achieve by way of this IS audit. Which systems are to be audited, which facilities are to be audited, disaster recovery is also included or not in the audit. What is the scope, what are the objectives of the audit, define the objectives. Next step is plan the audit. Plan the audit just like we do in traditional audit. What are the roles and responsibilities of different audit members? What will be the schedule of audit? What methodologies we will follow? Okay, then we will prepare a, an audit plan, document it and circulate it to the audit team as well as to the management. What will be the roles and responsibilities of the management? They have to give us access, complete access to all the IT assets so that we can conduct our audit smoothly. So, all this will form the part of the planning of the audit. 
next is performing the auditing work next finally we'll do go do the field work we'll perform the audit right the audit processes we'll conduct we'll use the tools the cats the computer assisted audit techniques we will physically inspect maybe the data center whether it's safe or not uh, if any from any kind of accidental hazards or you know intentionally if somebody wants to attack the data center is it secure that way physical inspection can be done interviewing of the employees can be done okay so this is all part of the performance of the audit after performing we will report the results we will prepare a formal report of what we have found out the risks the vulner vulnerabilities what action is the company taking to mitigate these risks and also our recommendations on what can be done to improvise the is the information systems lastly take necessary action for the deficiencies now the company the auditor you know uh, just conducts the audit gives the suggestions but the company has to take actions to work on those deficiencies whatever uh, loopholes or gaps have been found out by the auditor whatever suggestions he has given we need to implement those in order to fill the gaps okay training of the employees need to be done if any better technology is to be used if any security flaw is found out how to you know correct th that flaw whether it's a, a problem with the application that is being used whether it's a problem in the version that we are using all those need to be worked out and action has to be taken that is the last step of your is audit let us just go through see whatever i have told that only it's given i'll just make you mark so this is your step number 1 you know guys when we give numbering to anything it becomes easier for us to learn all these you have to learn so define the objectives the goals that the auditing team needs to achieve make sure to clarify the business value of each objective what is the business value how it is helping the business how is this particular objective valuable to the business how is it important that needs to be assessed only then audit karne mein maza aayega na business ke liye agar koi value hi nahi hai is objective ki to hum audit kyu karenge right which systems and services do we need to test we have to audit the it infrastructure physical equipment and facilities or everything disaster recovery is included or not what specific risks are involved okay does it does the uh, audit aim to achieve compliance with any regulation whether it is compliance with a particular regulation then we will report accordingly right next step number 2 is plan the audit in planning the audit what did i tell fixing the roles and responsibilities of the management team the it system administrators and also the audit team then schedule and methodology okay so you can just mark this is number 1 roles and responsibilities schedule is number 2 methodology for the process is number 3 identify monitor report and data classification tools that the team will use and any logistical issues that the company may face logistical issue means like taking equipment offline for evaluation so when audit will be conducted we have to take all the systems offline only then we'll be able to check otherwise agar kaam hote rahega then in real time how will we check whether it's correct or not so sometimes we have to shut down certain systems so those are logistical issue carry audit carry karne mein practically kya issue hogi when it comes to logistical issues next once the plan is made we have to document and circulate the plan to ensure that all staff members have a common understanding okay so this is point number 2 3 tools is point number 4 logistical issues and then document and circulate the plan so this is your planning the audit next step is to perform the audit step number 3 is performing the audit the auditing team should conduct the audit according to the plan and methodologies this will typically include running scans on it resources like file sharing services database servers and saas application saas full form it is uh, software as a service so all the application softwares that the company is using scanning those for network security data access levels user access rights the users who have right to use these application are the rights equally distributed to everyone or it's given according to their roles 
एंड वेदर इट इज़ वर्किंग दैट वे और नॉट कुछ चीज़ें कुछ लोगों के लिए सिस्टम में लॉक्ड होनी चाहिए कुछ चीज़ों का एक्सेस होना चाहिए सो वेदर एक्सेस राइट्स आर गिवन प्रॉपरली और नॉट एंड अदर सिस्टम कॉन्फिगरेशन सो दिस इज रनिंग स्कैन इज पॉइंट नंबर वन दिस मेथड रनिंग स्कैन नेक्स्ट इज टू फिजिकली इंस्पेक्ट द डेटा सेंटर फॉर रेजिलियंस टू फायर्स फ्लड्स पावर सर्जेस रेजिलियंस मीन्स प्रोटेक्शन वेदर इट कैन प्रोटेक्ट इट सेल्फ ऑन नॉट डेटा सेंटर क्या होते हैं डेटा सेंटर इज a building or you know a part of the building also which is dedicated to keep the computer systems the servers all the telecommunication lines routers and everything all those are kept in the data center so to go there and physically inspect then last step will be to interview the employees outside the it team outside the it team not of the it team of the company outside the team to assess their knowledge of security concerns and adherence to proper to the company security policy so this is step number 3 that you can do all right so this is performing the audit work step 3 is report step 4 is reporting the results in report we will document a formal report that can be given to management stakeholders or the regulatory agency, agency as the case may be the report should include a list of security risks and vulnerabilities detected as well as actions that it staff recommend to mitigate them actions and the last step step number 5 is take necessary action follow through with the recommendations outlined in the audit report examples of security enhancement actions what can what can you do to enhance the security performing remediation procedures to fix a specific security flaw or weak spot training the employees adopting additional best practices for handling sensitive data recognizing signs of malware and phishing attacks what is phishing phishing is basically when a person uh makes themselves appear as somebody else you know sends a mail under somebody else's name under a reputed business's name to take out personal information from you okay you receive a mail so maybe say it's from reliance it's from it's from the ceo or cfo of reliance and they are asking for some uh you know uh information from you you will think that it's such a reputed company okay i should fill the form but it's actually from a uh person who has just concealed their identity acquiring new technologies to strengthen existing system regularly monitor infrastructure for security risks so these are the actions that can be taken to enhance the level of security next topic is difference between a security audit and risk assessment okay so this was introduction your or overview was your topic number 1 as per the table that i gave you it was topic number 1 then the steps was topic number 2 the difference between security audit and risk assessment is topic number 3 it sounds the same no security audit and risk assessment basically both are done to ensure security to increase the level of security or you know to evaluate the security risks of the organization then ma'am what is the difference the difference is between the timing and scope of both of these when security audit audit is done and when a risk assessment is done so let me just give you an idea of this so risk assessment is done before any it system is installed okay before any tools technology any it tool technology is deployed in the organization uske pehle kya kya risks hai unko assess karna is risk assessment so you can say this is a precautionary measure karne se pehle risk dekh lena kya hai and on the other hand security audit is the review of the existing it infrastructure it infrastructure hai company mein aisa nahi ki nahi hai hai usme kya risks hai that is uh, done by way of security audit is it clear let's just go through its important question can come from here a security audit and risk assessment 
each involve a process of examining and evaluating security risks for the organization. Then ma'am, what is the difference? It is to do with the timing and scope. A risk assessment is often performed at the start of an IT initiative. IT initiative liya ja raha hai, koi nahi technology company adopt kar rahi hai. So before doing that, before the IT initiative, before tools and technologies have been deployed, when we are assessing the risks, that, that's risk assessment. It's also performed every time the internal or external threat landscape changes. So if there are any internal or external threats, with regard to information technology, in that case also say there are there is a threat of malware or increase in phishing attacks or a sudden rise of ransomware attack. What is a ransomware attack? Ransomware attack means you are denied access to particular files, folders or to a system for which you earlier had access. You are denied access to that and if you want access, you have to pay a ransom. Ransom pata hai na? मतलब आपको पैसा देना पड़ेगा to get back the access. So that's ransomware attack or a massive shift to remote working nowadays. Many companies have gone to remote working, right? Work from home concept. तो अगर employee घर से काम कर रहा है उसके पास इतना office का data है, how to keep all those secure? Okay, what are the risks involved? If a company is deciding to you know shift to remote working, in that case, before doing that, a risk assessment should be done. What are the tools which can be used for doing this risk assessment? Basically, uh, before employing any tools and technology, we have to check kya kya risk hai jis ke liye hum tool technology ko deploy kar rahe hai. Right? And what is security audit? It is an audit of an existing IT infrastructure to test and evaluate security of current systems and operations current systems and operations to best you know take out the best of the security audit we should schedule the security audits at regular intervals on an ongoing basis now to make sure that security audit is effective in identifying flaws and weaknesses follow these best practices so what are the best practices that should be followed to ensure that the security audit is effective number one clear objectives Defining the goals and scope of audit, measurable, actionable and successfully, measurable goals on it. What should be the scope? It should be measurable and action should be taken. Action can be taken on such goals. Aise goals on it. All the members should stick to the defined objectives. Okay. So that no time and resources get wasted in doing other types of work. Second step is to Second step or you know second thing that we should keep in mind to ensure that security audit is done effectively is obtained buy-in from stakeholders. What is buy-in? Buy-in basically means you can say support. So for any for an infrastructural initiative like a security audit because we need support it will require a lot of support we have to get information from the organization right. So we need to have support and advocacy from the top levels of the organization including the chief security officer cso and cio chief information officer management should give all the time and resources that the auditor requires third point is define clear action items based on the audit results okay it's not enough just to publish a report of findings khali report de diya it's not complete a security the audit should contribute to the security of the organization by providing clear and practical guidelines for cyber security improvements okay auditors if apna report de diya that these are security these are the security uh, risks and the threats and the vulnerabilities no uh, use of just publishing the findings okay the auditor has to give clear and practical guidelines on how to improve the cyber security all right if there is a system vulnerability what action can be taken to remediate it if any data system is out of compliance out of any regulatory compliance what can be done to bring it again into compliance all right so regulatory compliance and the last point is security audit solution 
IT security auditing is most useful and effective when conducted regularly. So, create a schedule to periodically audit the entire system. So, scheduling and periodical conduct of security audit is required. These are the four things that we need to keep in mind so that the security audit can be effectively done. What are the four points? Establish clear objectives, obtain buy-in from stakeholders, define clear items of uh, action items based on the goals and lastly security audit solution should be it should be conducted periodically regularly that was our third topic this is our fourth topic compliance and security framework as per the rbi so this is only for the banking sector because the bank the banks heavily rely heavily rely on the electronic platforms on the use of information technology all banking transactions you see nowadays are done through uh, information systems electronically digitally even our government is supporting digital infrastructure so because of that agar information system mein hi flaw hua bank mein so you see what what havoc can be created in the economy so rbi has mandated the banks to get their information systems and networks audited RBI expects banks to assess their cyber security preparedness, how well they are prepared for any cyber, cyber attacks. RBI man mandates that a top-down approach in information security governance should be followed. Top-down approach means from the management to the CISO, that means a chief information systems officer, to the CSO, a chief security officer, to the lower hierarchy, that is, that is the employees. Everyone should be aware of the security concerns in the banks related to the information technology rbi also expects the banks to report to the cyber security and it examination cell of the department of banking supervision with the following details what are to be reported to the cs ite gap analysis against the published cyber security re resilience framework gap analysis means what is expected and what the bank has what is the gap the deficiency information security controls the effectiveness of the controls that are implemented the plan of action which the bank takes to minimize the security risks to mitigate those and the role of the ciso how rbi audit is performed for a bank it is done as an in-depth technical assessment includes information security process audit includes applicability of cyber security controls by checking evidence and logs on servers includes checking all norms of technical requirements as per rbi so this is how rbi audit is performed for a bank and rbi audit report mein kya kya hoga gap analysis report the report will provide who needs to do what activities to be compliant with the rbi okay to be compliant with the technical requirements of the rbi who in the company needs to do what wherever possible the report will include details on what exactly needs to be done and by which team or which person very detailed in-depth technical assessment is done next topic is rbi cyber security framework domains this is a very technical topic we'll just briefly go go through it don't try to understand each and everything otherwise you will only get confused because it is given in very short in your book in, if you want to go into detail, you have to go to the RBI circular and study this, wherein the RBI has given the framework for cyber security. What all controls do the bank need to have? RBI has provided clear guidelines for com control implementation for the baseline cyber security and resilience framework. Okay, the baseline controls are given. Baseline controls means these are the controls that almost all the banks okay all the banks should have at minimum again it is classified further as level one banks level two banks level three and level four level four banks based on the scale of operations you need to have higher levels of controls if you are a very big bank with many branches higher levels of controls level four if you are a small bank just you know just incorporated and with a very few branches minimum operations then level one controls these are the levels of controls that have been given but all the baseline controls are as follows inventory management of business over here right it assets 
the bank should at all times maintain the inventory of what IT assets it's having, the hardware, the softwares, the uh, network lines, information, data, what all IT assets it's having, uska pura inventory maintain karna chahiye. If any addition is made, any deletion is made, proper classification should be done as per the sensitivity of the IT assets. Okay. Okay, strike this IT assets from here. It's part of the previous point. Next is preventing execution of unauthorized software. Application security life cycle. So, throughout the life cycle of an application, security should be maintained. Okay, this the bank should ensure patch vulnerability and change management. If there is change in the access, if there is change in the softwares, how it is being managed, how uh, you know uh, training is given to the employees, how it is documented, all of these is in change management. Vendor risk management, if, if the security concerns, if the you know security of the information systems, the networks is outsourced, then how does the company, uh, how does the bank manages the risks of giving this to the vendor when you outsource anything you have the vendor risk also how is that managed removable media ko leke what are the policies that only uh, you know these types of files can be copied and pasted putting a restriction on those who all can insert removable media when you join you know after qualification when you go for a job you will get a laptop from your company therein there will be many restrictions many security controls that you cannot attach any removable media no pen drive no external hdd hdd okay to copy or uh, paste any kind of data even if it's even if you want that you have to take permission from the administrator so all these uh, policies relating to removable media maintenance monitoring and analysis of audit logs how far the audit logs need to be maintained what all have to be captured in the audit logs what access should be given to the auditor audit log settings metrics metrics in terms of you know the levels of uh, the percentage of how well a software can handle the risks metrics means measurement uh, you know the ways in which you can measure all these key performance indicators key risk indicators we have to uh, fix all those forensics forensics means to conduct a cyber security analysis on the information system the cyber security analysis will cover the forensics to get it done regularly environmental controls it's simple how it is adversely affecting the environment the information system and how the banks are managing these risks network management and security user access control the points that are easy i'm not focusing on those jo mujhe lag rahe, you will not be able to understand i'm just going in detail on those points although it's not required for your examination point of view but still you know if you don't understand maza nahi aayega padhne mein. authentication framework for customers you know uh, giving only those uh, access to the customer who are identified correctly in the banking system password you know correct dala user id correct dala sub authenticate ho raha hai customers ke liye that is to be ensured uh, advanced real time threat defense and management if there is any threat what are the defense mechanism for the uh, bank anti phishing what are the anti phishing policies vulnerability assessment and penetration test okay if if any attacker wants to penetrate in the system what is the mechanism that the bank is having the bank should have a mechanism to stop these penetrators red team exercises red team exercise basically from the word red you have to uh, understand that these teams are employed to you know assess the high level security risks and how the bank is minimizing those incident response and management user employee management awareness are the employees and the users of the information systems made aware of the risks customer education and awareness that you should not give your password to anyone the bank is not sending you these kinds of messages so don't respond to those Hame aate rehte na, aise messages so are we educating our customers or not secure configuration secure mail and messaging systems data leak prevention strategy what strategies are there to prevent the data leak risk based 
transaction monitoring okay besides these controls the banks are mandated to implement controls based on their level so out of these controls only you will see level 1 banks ko ye control lane level 2 ko ye level 3 ko ye this i am not going through it's it's just the repetition of it level 4 bank cyber security so that was our topic number 4 i guess just let me check yes now the topic the fifth topic is cyber security and cyber forensics this is very very important the institute has given you certain model question papers if you know if have you seen those yes ma'am we have seen in that model question paper number two you will see there's a question on the cyber security and cyber forensics so that way also it becomes very important and it's a very easy topic cyber security and cyber forensic cyber security is basically a defense mechanism before anything has happened any attack has taken place somebody has tried to give you a threat what defense mechanism what security controls you have in your organization that is part of your cyber security or cyber forensics kya hai jab kand ho gaya uske baad auditor is coming and trying to recover the lost data and also trying to find out the reason of the data loss so one is preventive and another one is reactive okay one is trying to prevent any type of cyber attack from happening and another is functioning in a reactionary manner that is after the attack has taken place samajh mein aa gaya difference yes let's just go through very easy cyber security is a professional discipline that is about creating defensive measures to protect against cyber attacks people working in this industry may have a wide range of information technology skills including programming operating systems and networking the primary goal of any cyber security professional is to create so what is the goal of any professional associated with cyber security to create a network or system that is impossible to breach thereby protecting the information within the networks one important note about cyber security is that it is almost entirely about prevention entirely about prevention what can be done to ensure cyber security things like setting user permissions establishing ftp that is file transfer protocols and requiring secure frequently changing passwords are vital elements of cyber security so in every organization you will see cyber security measures are there now what is computer forensic computer forensic is the practice of recovering data from a device often to uncover evidence of criminal activity from the word forensic have you watched my forensic audit video the le lecture where i have explained everything about forensic audit if not go and do watch that forensic basically means to find out legal evidence which can be put in the court of law so we are recovering the data from any device and the objective is also to uncover why this data has been lost the practice itself is reactionary meaning it only takes place after an incident has occurred and is not concerned with preventing the incident the computer forensic job typically serves one of two purposes they either assist with an investigation either assist with an investigation or help people and companies recover data so two purposes ya to investigation mein help kar raha hai ya fir data ko bas recover karna hai isme help kar raha hai in the first instance a computer forensic specialist will be given access to a suspect's device such as laptop desktop or smartphone once they have the device they begin using a variety of skills such as programming hardware knowledge and software knowledge to locate the valuable data and in the second case in the law enforcement case they will ideally uncover data that is of value to the prosecution jo case ke liye important hai wo data hame uncover karna hai sometimes computer forensic specialists are called in to help a company recover lost data while the purpose of the assignment greatly cover, uh, differs greatly from uncovering evidence of criminal activities the processes used to recover the lost data are very similar 
So in short, we can say that cyber security is focused on prevention while computer forensic is about recovery and reaction. Despite their differences, both of these are meant to protect data, programs, networks and other digital assets. Cyber security helps to prevent cyber crimes from happening while computer forensics helps recover data when an attack does occur and also help identify the culprit behind the crime. What specializations are available in cyber security and computer forensics? Cyber security and computer forensics both have a few specialization that focus on specific areas of practice. Cyber security has specializations like systems architecture, software security, access management, ethical hacking and vulnerability assessment. And computer forensic specialization tend to be the reason why data is being recovered. So, जो security लगा रहे हैं उनको तो पूरा technical knowledge होना चाहिए और जो खोद रहे हैं recovered data they should know the techniques of criminal investigations and basically criminal investigation techniques they have to be aware of. All right. Next topic is IT audit in the banking sector. This is topic number six. So the major objectives of an IS audit include among others, so these are the major objectives, four objectives are there, safeguarding of information, system, assets, resources, maintenance of data integrity, maintenance of system effectiveness and ensuring system efficiency. So objective number one, what are we reading? We are reading the objectives of IS audit. Step number, uh, point number one, not steps, these are points. Safeguarding of information system assets and resources. The organization information system uh, assets, the IT assist, uh, assets must be protected by a system of internal controls. So when I say IT assets, it includes everything, hardware, software, facilities, people, data files, system documentation and supplies. This is because hardware can be damaged maliciously, software and data files can be stolen, deleted, altered. Supplies of negotiable forms can be used for unauthorized purposes. So safeguarding of the assets is an important function of the organization. So this is one of our main objectives when conducting IS audit. The term IT infrastructure is a generic one used to describe the physical computer installation, the system software and the IS process that support them. So as an IS auditor, what we have to do? We have to review the physical security physically secure hai ya nahi, all the facilities, the system softwares, okay. And also we have to review the adequacy of the internal controls, whether the internal controls are adequate, sufficient for these IT facilities or not. IT facilities must be protected against all hazards, including accidental and intentional hazards. All right, next point is maintenance of data integrity. What is data integrity? Integrity of data means that preventing the data from any kind of unauthorized addition, deletion or alteration. It includes safeguarding of information against unauthorized addition, deletion, modification or alteration. This includes items such as accounting records, backup, documentation, etc. Data is most important in any information system. So, data should be protected from any kind of unauthorized alteration, modification, deletion, theft. Okay, that is the meaning of data integrity. The auditor needs to ensure that the company is able to maintain its data integrity. Now, how to do that? The, the auditor will verify whether data has all these desired features or not. What are the features? Accuracy. Data should be accurate because we are basing our business decisions on the data. If data is inaccurate, the business decisions will be inaccurate. Next, confidentiality. Sensitive data should be protected. It should not be able to, easy, uh, to, be, able to be stolen or attacked from any kind of a threat. So, confidentiality should be maintained. Restriction should be there on, co on copying the data. Okay. 
It also includes protecting the individual pieces of information that may seem harmless by the owner but can be used to infer other confidential information. Aisi information just se dusri information mil sakti hai, us information ko bhi protect karna. So everything is included in confidentiality. Next is completeness. So data should be complete because incomplete data is of very low significance. Jaise adhura gyan haani ka rakh hai, right? Incomplete knowledge is dangerous. Similarly, incomplete data is also very dangerous. Up to date status, it should be updated regularly. If it's not able to be updated, then it presents a false picture to the organization. Reliability, it should be reliable because all business decisions are taken on the current database. Availability, data should be available when authorized user needs it. जब मुझे चाहिए तब डेटा मिल जाना चाहिए अब टाइम टू टाइम अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ डेटा शुड बी देयर अदरवाइज इफ इट शुड बी इंश्योर दैट द इंफॉर्मेशन सर्विसेज आर अनअवेलेबल टू द अनऑथराइज यूजर्स अवेलेबल टू द ऑथराइज यूजर्स एंड अनअवेलेबल टू द अनऑथराइज यूजर्स एंड इट शुड बी अवेलेबल एट द करेक्ट टाइम बिकॉज इफ इट इज नॉट अवेलेबल टाइमली देन द वेरी पर्पज ऑफ मेनटेनिंग द डेटा बेस गेट्स डिफीटेड वाई डू वी यूज इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी to perform our processes in a in a faster and accurate manner jab man chaha information mil gayi data mil gaya so agar data timely mila nahi the very purpose the very objective of information systems is defeated effectiveness information should be effective so that it helps in the process of business development and expansion if data integrity is not maintained an organization loses its true representation I'm just giving you you a mnemonic to learn this. The mnemonic is accurate. Data kaisa hona chahiye, ma'am? Data accurate hona chahiye, ma'am? Ye to pehla point hai. But you see, A for accuracy, C for confidentiality, C for completeness, U for up to date status, R for reliability, A for availability. T for timeliness and E for effectiveness. So data कैसा होना चाहिए? Data होना चाहिए accurate. So whenever you are learning the mnemonic, you should also say the full form of it. A say of A for accuracy, C for confidentiality, C for completeness, U for up to date status, R for reliability, A for availability, T for timeliness and E for effectiveness. All right. The third point is maintenance of system effectiveness. What is the meaning of this term effectiveness? Effectiveness means जैसा सोचा वैसा पाया या नहीं पाया उससे जज करते हैं कि सिस्टम इफेक्टिव है या नहीं सो द रेशियो ऑफ द एक्चुअल आउटपुट दैट यू हैव गॉट कंपेयर टू योर स्टैंडर्ड और बजेटरी आउटपुट इज द पैरामीटर टू जज द सिस्टम इफेक्टिवनेस जो सोचा वो मिला कि नहीं मिला जैसा इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम से चाहा वो नहीं मिला मींस इफेक्टिव नहीं है आपने सोचा कि ये वीडियो देख के मुझे ये पूरा टॉपिक समझ में आ जाए ये आपका एक्सपेक्टेशन अगर समझ में आया दैट मींस इट्स इफेक्टिव समझ में नहीं आया एक्चुअल आउटपुट इज लोअर मींस नॉट इफेक्टिव सेम गोज फॉर द इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम इफेक्टिवनेस and an effective information system significantly contributes to the achievement of goals of an organization okay we just uh, skip this part system effectiveness is a ratio of the actual output to the standard or budgeted output if it's more than 100% that means objective has been achieved effective it's effective otherwise it's deemed ineffective so when we are operating computerized in a computerized manner the major goals that we want to achieve is we want to improve our task of accomplishments okay any task that we are performing usme improvisation hona chahiye jo manually ho sakta tha now we are implementing computer computerization it should improve the the quality of the task the work and the services should also improve operational effectiveness means the ease of doing the task it should be easy to operate that should be ensured users must be satisfied technical effectiveness that means the system should be equipped and upgraded with appropriate hardware and software facilities technically it should be effective and also economically it should be effective jitna kharcha lagaya utna benefit nahi paya to kya hi system lagaya right so system 
should be economically effective. Last objective is ensuring system efficiency. I think in my regular lectures, I have given a detailed explanation of system effectiveness and efficiency. I hope you guys remember that. I have taken your examples only with respect to your studies. Anyways, system efficiency means it is the ratio of input to output. Kharcha kita laga, cost kitna laga, utna benefit aya ki nahi aya. Agar aya, that means it is efficient. Agar nahi aya, that means it's not efficient. Using the minimum resources to achieve the desired objectives. The ratio of output to input is known as efficiency. If output is more than is more with the same or less actual input, then system efficiency is achieved. Input kam karo, output zada likya ho. Theek hai? Then you are efficient. Aap input hi badaye ja rahe hai, output utna hi rahe rahe, then you are not efficient. Right? Other objectives are identify, so this is just the miscellaneous other objectives, point number five. Identify the risks that the organization is exposed to in the existing computerized environment and prioritize such risks. The implementation of information technology in the organization is as per the parameters laid down in the security policy or not. Verify whether the information system procedures and policies have been designed, de devised for the entire organization. And due prudence is exercised at all times. Verify whether proper security policies, procedures have been formulated and implemented. Contribute effectively towards the minimization of computer abuses, crimes by suggesting steps for removing any laxity, any gaps. Suggest improvement in the security controls. Act as an advisor to the management. Ma'am, what are we studying? What are we studying? We are studying the objectives of IS audit. Objectives. Why are we audit conduct kar rahe hain? Four main objectives the and these are the other objectives. Adhere to the established norms of ethics and professional standards is it clear so what were the four main objectives if you remember the four main objectives safeguarding of the it assets all the it business assets second was maintenance of data integrity maintenance of system effectiveness and lastly maintenance of system efficiency the next topic this is i guess topic number seven it is the scope of IS audit. The IS audit should cover all the computerized departments or offices of the organization. All departments which have computerizations should be included in the scope of audit. It should include the collection and evaluation of evidence information to determine whether the information system in use safeguards the assets, maintain data security, integrity, availability. It achieves the organizational goals effectively and efficiently. So, all objectives should be fulfilled. Aisa audit ka scope hona chahiye. It should include the processes for planning and organization of the IS activity, the process for monitoring of such activity and the examination of the adequacy of the organization and management of the IS specialist staff and non-specialists with IS responsibilities to address the exposures of the organization. Alright, so scope mein kya kya included in one All departments and offices which are computerized, it should be able to fulfill the objectives of IS audit. Okay, again the planning and organization of the information systems activity regular monitoring should be included in the scope and also the roles and responsibilities of the information system staff who are specialists and also knowledge of the non-specialists who are not directly associated with information systems. So, the next topic is information systems audit approaches. So, there are three approaches in auditing the information systems. This is also an important topic. One question in the model question papers has been asked from this topic. So, mark this as important. Information system audit approaches. What are the approaches that the auditor can adopt to audit the information systems? So, there are three approaches. Auditing around the computer, auditing through the computer and auditing with the computer. So, it's you know very similar. It's sounding very similar but it is different. Let's go through each of these 
ऑडिटिंग अराउंड द कंप्यूटर अराउंड द कंप्यूटर दैट मीन्स वी आर नॉट गोइंग डीप इन टू द प्रोग्राम एंड प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ द कंप्यूटर Instead, what is the auditor auditing? The auditor is auditing the output data or documents. The it, the focus is on checking the correctness of the output data or documents concerning the input of a process, without going into details of the processing. So, no checking of the processing, but only checking ki jo output aaya, jo document aaya input dene ke baad, wo sahi hai ki nahi. we are not going deep inside the programming of the computer that is why see i have circled the word around auditing around the computer we are just auditing around the computer not going inside it okay so this approach is preferred where auditors do not have a high level of technical skills when it comes to information systems they are not able to adopt the other two processes that is other two approaches that is auditing through the computer and auditing with the computer so now have you understood what is auditing around the computer it is when we check only the correctness or accuracy of what of the output data or the documents concerning the input that we have provided without going into details of the processing so this system focuses on procedural controls rather than computer controls जो प्रोसेस फॉलो किया जा रहा है इनपुट देने का आउटपुट लेने का सेग्रीगेशन ऑफ ड्यूटीज करेक्ट है या नहीं रोल्स एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज प्रॉपरली असाइंड है या नहीं टू दी आई टी पर्सनल प्रोसीजरल बातों पे ये अप्रोच ज्यादा ध्यान देता है रादर दैन कंप्यूटर कंट्रोल्स देन मैम वाई इज इट आई एस ऑडिट अप्रोच इट इज आई एस ऑडिट अप्रोच बिकॉज वी आर कंसर्न विथ द डेटा इन्वॉल्व क्लियर नाउ वेयर is this approach suitable when should auditor adopt this approach the auditor should adopt this approach when the computer system the information system is very simple the logic is straight forward not complex when the programs or the information system the program that we are auditing the application is provided by a reputed vendor and there are less chances of errors and material misstatements then we can use this approach when the volume of data is less then we can use this approach see when should the auditor use this approach important this approach can be used in which circumstances number 1 when the application system is simple logic is straight forward and a clear audit trail exists clear audit trail exist means audit trail is a series of audit evidence clear audit trail is visible we don't have to delve deep into the processing okay next the task environment is relatively constant and system itself is rarely modified no for no significant modifications in the system second this approach may be used when an application uses a generalized package that is well tested and used by many users it is provided by a reputed vendor and has received widespread use for example tally you all you all have heard of the common accounting software tally so if the auditor is auditing uh, a computer application which is you know uh, an organization which is running its accounts on tally and tally is provided by a reputed vendor in that case they may use auditing around the computer where no you know no source code is changed and documentation to prevent unauthorized modification of the package exist that means nobody can make any unauthorized changes in the source code in the documentation of the package it is a kind of a fixed package okay not a lot of customizations can be made understood point number 3 when high reliance is placed on users rather than computer controls for example i told no segregation of duties roles and responsibilities assignment is clear or not so when organization is focusing on more of user controls rather than computer controls in that case which approach will the auditor use the auditor will use the approach of auditing around the computer understood now with this you can guess what will be auditing through the computer what is through means this is the computer we are going through the computer inside of it so basically we are processing we are processing what we we are auditing the programs and the logic the 
target of the audit in this approach will be the programs and the data which is involved in processing we will check whether the logics and the controls the auditor will test and evaluate the logics and control existing within the system existing within the system they will not check bahar not check around the computer will check through the computer understood just mark it so this approach you can understand the auditor here needs to have a very good knowledge very sound knowledge of computer systems hardware and programming understood under this approach the computer programs and the data constitute the target of the is audit here both the operating system and application system is tested the compliance and substantive tests are performed on the computer system its software and data is auditors can test the application system effectively under this approach the is auditors can use a computer to test logics and control existing within the system within the system this approach will increase the is auditors confidence in the reliability and applicability of the evidence kyunki andar ghus ke pura procedure ka checking ho gaya hai to reliability and confidence will automatically increase right but again auditor needs to have a fair knowledge of the operating system the hardware being used and technical expertise in the field of information system should be there the third approach is auditing with the computer with the computer computer ko ek tool ke tarah use kiya gaya hai to perform the audit so here the auditor actually uses the computer as a tool to perform the audit the programs and softwares are used for performance of the audit under this approach the computer programs and its system are used as tools in the audit process the objective is to perform substantive tests using the computers and their programs the data from the auditee's computer system are retrieved in an independent environment okay where this approach should be used this method is used where application system consists of large volume of inputs large volume of outputs are produced and where direct examination of the input and output is not possible it is difficult logic of the system is complex and whatever audit trail is visible jo evidence hai usme substantial gaps dikh rahe between what it should be and what it is in that case we have to use audit uh, the computer as a tool to perform our further audit and with this we go to the next part of this topic only that is computer assisted audit techniques so when we use audit uh, when we use computers as a tool to perform audit we are actually using what we are using cats computer assisted audit tools or techniques what are cats they are efficient and effective ways to audit system generated files records and documents and to evaluate the ic of an accounting system in many information systems so the when computers are used to audit the system generated files and records and to evaluate the efficiency of the internal controls then we say we are using cats computer assisted audit tools are a practical means for conducting an audit wherever the information is available on the magnetic media alone so when information is there electronically then we can conduct the audit electronically is it true or not yes ma'am so now what are the types of audit the, these cats the first one is audit software audit software it is a program that is used by the auditor to process data of auditing audit significance from the auditee's accounting system auditee means your client client ke accounting system se data extract karke usko process karke meaningful information nikalta hai kon audit software there are three types of audit softwares packet softwares special special purpose programs and utility programs package programs are designed to perform processing functions creating data files and reports in a format that is specified by the auditor okay next special purpose programs are perform used to perform audit tasks in certain specific circumstances and are prepared by the auditors or an outside programmer engaged by the auditor so as the name suggests they are meant for special purposes they will be used only to perform certain specific tasks and utility programs you can understand by the name utility means something that is of use 
okay which is satisfying a want or a desire of the auditor so auditor desire is say to check the accuracy or to perform certain calculations sort or create the files print the files print the reports in that case utility programs come to play they are used to perform common data processing functions such as sorting creating and printing files clear so the three types of audit softwares next method tool of cat is test data technique test data technique means here what we will do we will take a sample of data sample means we will take some dummy data and put it as input in the computer system dummy data for example kuch transactions ki detail maine dali now i know what the result should be okay that is the predetermined determined result that is known by the auditor now when the computer processes it and it gives a result it is the actual result given by the computer so the auditor can see whether there is any gap in the actual result and the predetermined result if there is any gap that means there is a problem in the processing then the auditor can go and actually find out the error or the problem in the system so that is test data technique for example if i give you a very simple example auditor will enter this is not actually what the auditor will do but just to make you you know give a feel of what this test data technique is i will say to 5 into 7 in the computer i know what the result should be the result should be 35 that is what i know if the computer system gives me the result 35 then it is operating effectively okay it is operating effectively but if it is giving some result other than 35 some problem some locha is there in the logic then i have to check further is it clear so test data technique a sample of data transactions is entered into the auditee's computer system and the results actual results are compared with the predetermined results cats are used to test the details of the sample transactions the balances of accounts to identify any unusual fluctuations if any and general edp controls edp stands for electronic data processing ed edp controls like accessing the program libraries so if suppose access to certain program library access to certain folder is denied so how what will i do i will go and do negative checking i will go and try to access the folder if i am granted access that means control is not working properly if i am not granted access that means it is effective did you understand test data techniques next third one is general audit software it is the most widely and commonly used for conducting is audits its use is limited by the skills of the personnel conducting audit acl is one such software so acl is now known as you know the name has been changed it has been basically taken over by a company that is galvanize it is now known as galvanize it is a tool for data analysis so for data analysis we use this acl or galvanize it has the capabilities for compliance and substantive testing we all know what compliance and substantive testings are acl use is used to access analyze summarize or report data what are the advantages of using this general audit softwares it creates flexible reports and documents auditors are independent of the technical experts for the data access and the process so they can perform their work independently more audit coverage it saves time money and effort it helps gain control over and confidence in the audit results general audit software is not useful at the application level okay that is all about your computer assisted audit tools the next topic again it is very important i would say question from this topic has also been asked in your mqp model question paper the information system audit methodology methodology basically means the steps earlier we had read the steps of it security audit these are the steps of the information systems audit there are again five steps here five major steps planning of is audit test of controls test of transactions tests of balances and completion of audit in the planning stage of audit what we will do planning it is the first step of the is audit what what do we need to do in the planning we need to understand the organization the 
the structure of the organization what are the departments what are the offices that are computerized we need to obtain an understanding of the organization secondly we need to obtain an understanding of the processes and the programs that are involved we need to understand what are the objectives of conducting the audit also a risk analysis of the operating system should be conducted what are the risks and vulnerabilities of the system because according to that plan then i will conduct my audit we have to also obtain an understanding of the internal controls now how can i do all of this planning i can do by uh, taking interviews of the employee by observation of the controls okay by inspecting or reviewing the past audit reports or his uh, past records of the organization understood so all these are the ways in which i can plan my audit so i'll just quickly make you mark the points if you learn point wise you know it becomes easier for you to write in the exam so i it is the first step of the is audit what we need to do we need to obtain an understanding of the audit department office organization and its processes also so this is point number 1 secondly we need to obtain an understanding of the objectives to be accomplished in the audit collecting background information background information of the entity assigning appropriate staff according to their skills and aptitude identifying the areas of risk so risk analysis of the operating system is the fifth step fifth step so you know when we do a risk analysis we need to we are able to understand where which are the risk uh, areas of higher risk and we can focus on that right next to understand the internal controls used within the organization point number 6 now various techniques that can be used is review of previous audit reports papers interviews observation of activities this can help us to plan our audit step number 1 done step number 2 is test of controls now actually going into the field and checking of the controls during this phase of is audit internal controls are tested to evaluate whether they operate effectively or not this will include test of two types of controls which we'll read further in this chapter management controls and application controls so controls which are related to the management of information system and controls which are related to the applications we will test both of these controls in this step the objective is to evaluate the reliability of the controls and find out weaknesses of the controls of course why are we checking the controls we are checking the controls to understand whether we can rely on these controls or not and whether there are any weaknesses associated with these controls so when it comes to controls what all do we need to check we need to check the identification that means we need to identify what all the controls are whether they are implemented or not identify to kar liya but implement hua hai ya nahi next is the existence of controls sometimes you know the controls are there they are implemented also but in actuals in in actual scenario in reality they are not existing for example there is a control that the user should change their password every week but the users are not doing so control hai implement bhi kiya hua hai organization mein but users are not doing it so it does not have any existence next is adequacy whether the controls that have been implemented they are adequate sufficient according to the organization or not documentation whether all controls are documented or not next we also need to check the maintenance of the controls controls here but whether they are maintained regularly if updates are required whether they are updated or not and lastly monitoring all the controls whether they are monitored regular checks are being conducted or not they are supervised or not or ek bar laga diya fir bhul gaye ki control hai aisa nahi hona chahiye there should be proper monitoring of the controls so all these we need to do when we are conducting the second step that is test of controls the next step is tests of transactions this is used to evaluate whether erroneous transactions have led to a material misstatement of the financial information and whether the transactions have been handled effectively and efficiently or not so as the name suggests we are checking the transactions whether the transactions have been properly processed or not whether erroneous information is leading to a material misstatement in the financial statement galti ki kisne information system ne processing mein 
उससे पकड़ी गई एक मटीरियल मिस स्टेटमेंट वेदर इट इज वेदर दिस मिस स्टेटमेंट इज मटीरियली मिस स्टेटिंग द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट और नॉट दैट वी नीड टू चेक फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू नो वी कैन ट्रेस द जर्नल एंट्रीज टू द ओरिजिनल डॉक्यूमेंट जो जर्नल एंट्री कंप्यूटर में है सिस्टम में है क्या उसका कोई फिजिकल डॉक्यूमेंट एग्जिस्ट करता है ऑन वॉट बेसिस हैज द जर्नल एंट्री बीन रिकॉर्डेड इट इज इट बोगस इज इट अ फेक एंट्री वी नीड टू चेक दैट इन टेस्ट ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन वी कैन ऑल्सो चेक whether the price files the the prices that have been fetched from the computer the price files are proper or not jo jis product ka price hai wohi fetch karke sales bill bana ya nahi bana so we need to check the masters so this is what we call checking of the testing of the transactions clear the next step is tests of balances you know the meaning difference between transactions and balances right transaction means a you can say an exchange between two parties okay and balance is the final net result of all those transactions for example i have made sales to mr x okay sales to mr x i have made 30 times in a year each of those 30 will be considered as single transaction so there are total 30 transactions so i have made sales to mr x he has paid me some money in between again i have made sale again paid some money some sales return have come net me final year end me kitna rupya mr x ko mujhe dena hai abhi baki ya mujhe mr x ko dena baki hai that is the balance okay so during this phase of is audit the judgment is made on the losses on the extent of losses or account mis statement that occur when information system fail to safeguard the assets or maintain data integrity achieve system effectiveness and efficiency goals you remember we had done all this safeguarding of assets data integrity right uh, maintaining system effectiveness and efficiency what were these these were the objectives of is audit right so when we are conducting this step we need to ensure we need to check what is the effect on the accounts on the account balances when all these objectives are not fulfilled of asset safeguarding nahi hua data integrity maintain nahi hua to account balance mein kya effect aa raha hai that is checked in this step is it clear so when the auditor checks the safeguarding of assets and data integrity they may you know what they can do they can uh, take written confirmations from receivables or the physical inspection of inventory kyunki account balance ki baat ho rahi hai na so you see all the balance sheet items will be here understood so for example regarding the safeguarding of assets and data integrity objectives what tests can be performed confirmation of the receivable physical verification of inventory recalculating the depreciation on fix, fixed assets and when we want to check The, whether the objectives of system effectiveness and efficiency have been achieved or not what we can check see when will a system not be effective or when it will not be efficient if the hardware of the, or the software used is inappropriate if the program has not been implemented properly okay so all the development aspects you have to check purchase of an appropriate software okay when output is generated but not meeting the standard high quality output nahi hai which is required for decision making clear the last step is the completion of audit we all know what happens at the completion stage yes auditor gives his final opinion gives states all the findings of the audit in the report along with the findings the weaknesses and vulnerabilities of the system the risks associated with those weaknesses ye weakness identify ho as ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में ये हो सकता है और राइट नेक्स्ट ऑडिटर विल ऑल्सो गिव रिकमेंडेशन ऑन हाउ टू इम्प्रूव सो ऑल दिस इज डिस्कस्ड एट अ मीटिंग विच इज नोन एज द एग्जिट मीटिंग नाउ वेन द वेन द ऑडिटर डिस्कस दिस ड्राफ्ट रिपोर्ट दिस इज द पार्ट ऑफ द ड्राफ्ट रिपोर्ट ओके द ऑडिटर गिवस ओपिनियन अबाउट इम्प्रूवमेंट्स ठीक है रिकमेंडेशन देते हैं नाउ द ऑडिटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विल ऑल्सो स्टडी दिस एंड मे बी टेक सम रेमेडियल एक्शन after all this the final audit report will be prepared wherein the auditor will state all the objectives of audit the scope of audit what all procedures were performed what were the findings the weaknesses the recommendations and also the auditee's action on those 
points that the auditor has pointed out. Clear? Yes. So, the auditors are required to form their opinion clearly indicating their findings, analysis and recommendations. Potential IS audit findings should be discussed with the appropriate, so discussion should be made with the appropriate personnel. Preliminary conclusions and audit findings should be presented to the auditee during an exit conference. Okay, then after the exit meeting, the, the draft audit report should be the natural ex extension of the exit conference material along with all the discussions made. Once the auditee's responses have been received, the final audit report should be prepared. So, I have explained you everything. Now, the auditor should also maintain the work papers clearly. There should be separate work papers for the IS audit. All the documentation should be stored and authorized with authorized signatures which member of the audit team verified what what procedures were performed a typical audit report will include the audit objective scope the approach adopted critical findings ka summary the data to support the critical findings potential consequences and auditees responses and recommendation to rectify the weaknesses is it clear Okay, now this is another small topic, but it's very, uh, you know, question. It's an area from where question can come in the exam. Sub subsystem factoring. Subsystem means what? A part of a, a large system. There's a big system. Uske chote components kar diye gaye hai to ease, uh, to, you know, to uh, get an ease of understanding, to make it more simpler. A big system is broken into small smaller system smaller components okay so what is a subsystem a subsystem is a component of a system that performs some basic function needed by the overall system to obtain its objectives to attain its objectives there's a big system overall system uska kuch objectives hai. to attain those objectives the system is broken down into components called subsystem. Now, these subsystems will also perform certain function jo usi main objective ko fulfill karne ke liye kaam kar rahe hai. For example, your preparation in the exam, your objective, the final system kya hai? To become a CMA, right? Now, to become a CMA, that is the objective of your system. Now, your system you have again broken down into components, different subjects. Pass hone ke liye sare subjects mein mujhe pass hona padega. Aggregate mujhe marks lane padenge. Right? Now, all those subsystems are helping you. Each of the subject is performing certain function to help you achieve the main objective. Is it clear? So, this was just an example. Thus, a complicated system is divided into small systems, small subsystems until it becomes easily understandable. Once the system has been factored, mean, means divided into easily understandable subsystem, the task of the IS auditor is to evaluate the effectiveness of the controls in each subsystem, to determine the implications of each subsystem's reliability. Every subsystem is reliable or not to determine that and also relate it with the reliability of the overall system, with the effectiveness of the overall system. Now, ye do subsystems kya hai? Those do main subsystems hai. Okay, two main set of systems which can be further factored into subsystems. So, two main systems are there: management systems and application systems. They are further factored into different subsystems. Management functions kya hai? Management systems, they provide stable and basic infrastructural facilities on which the information systems can be built and operated on a day-to-day -day basis. So, basic infrastructure facilities provide karna in a stable manner is the function of the management system. Now, they can be further factored into here, I think, are seven types of subsystems. Let us study each. The first one is top-level management. This system is responsible for long-term policy decisions on, on what? Long-term decisions on whether to use the information systems or not. Second in, is the information systems management. Okay, this is responsible for the actual installation, the planning and control. The, uh, it is responsible for planning and controlling the information systems activities. Okay, this system actually helps the top management in making long-term policy and translates the long-term policies into short-term goals and objectives. 
information systems management in planning and controlling the is next is the system development system development management it designs men, implements and maintains the application systems from the name only we can understand developing of the systems fourth is the pro programming management it prepares programs for new systems maintains the old systems and also provides general systems support okay any support which is required by the existing systems it will provide that programming management fifth is the data administration basically concerned with the issues of the database planning and control that is required in the database so all this is you know helping the main system that is the management system to provide the infrastructural facility providing the database providing the systems providing the programs right to help the information system to work next is the quality assurance management it ensures that the information systems development implementation operations and maintenance they conform to the established standards of quality see guys i understand that this topic is a little technical but again if you understand if you understand and then study it will become easier for you but if you try to mug up trust me it will be very difficult yes the last one so there are 8 i told you 7 but actually there are 8 security administration okay actually 9 not even 8 this last one is also one 9 security administration is responsible for access control and physical security over the information system the name is clear with the name it's clear and the last is operations management it plans and controls the day to day operations of the information systems clear so that is the main system the main management system factored into further nine subsystems each of the subsystem helping the main system to at attain its objectives next is the application systems so i can just give a capital roman one here for the management systems and then further classified into nine types application systems is the second main system application systems undertake basic transactions processing management reporting and decision support they can be broken into further subsystems we'll study each of the subsystem the first one is the boundary subsystem it consists of the components it consists of the components that establish an interface between the user and the system so how the user and the system can communicate it is establishing an interface between the two that is the boundary subsystem the next is the input subsystem the components that capture prepare and enter commands and data into the system third is the communication subsystem it consists of the components that transmit data among the subsystems and systems boundary boundaries boundary system and input system how can they communicate using the communication system the output system and the input system how they can communicate using the communication system so transmitting data between the subsystems is the work of the communication subsystem the processing subsystem it it has components that perform decision making computation classification ordering and summarization of data all the processing that needs to be done is done by the processing subsystem so this was number 4 the fifth one is database subsystem so we had the database management right similarly we have the database subsystem and application system which will help to add modify delete alter data in the system and last one is the output subsystem it consists of components that retrieve and present data to the users of the system so retrieving data getting back data from the information system and giving it to the users is the function of the output subsystem is it clear okay so the next topic is the broad framework for conducting is audit this topic is basically a uh, you can consider a repetition of the objectives you will see all the objectives of is audit again coming here but here we'll talk more about what are the concerns involved okay the major concerns for is audit which have been derived from its objectives 
So the first objective was safeguarding of assets. We remember that we need to safeguard. We, the auditor needs to ensure that all the IT assets, data, hardware, software, programs, operating systems are safeguarded. Now, what are the concerns relating to the safeguarding of these assets that we are going to study? The first one is environmental security. So, you know the environment in which all the assets are located. Say, for example, the location of the server room, the location of the database, data center. It should be secure. It should be safe from all types of environmental damage. Maybe intentional, maybe accidental. Okay, the location should be strategic and not easily accessible. Not everyone can access the locations of the IT assets. Second one is uninterrupted power supply. How will the assets, how will your uh, IT assets be able to function properly? If there is an uninterrupted power supply, UPS, remember? Because if the power supply is interrupted and something important was going on, an important function was performed on the database, it will stop in between. Asset safeguarding is compromised there, right? So, uninterrupted power supply should be maintained. We should see that the UPS is functioning properly and it is monitored and maintained regularly. Okay. Third one is electric electricity lines. Electrical cabling and wiring. Because in large organizations where you know IT audit is conducted, information systems ki audit or your system kitna bada hoga aap soch sakte ho, right? So how much of electrical wiring and cabling must be involved? So all these should operate properly. There should be no operational failure. If there is an operational failure, it is a concern for the auditor. Data cabling. So you know 90% of the times. People have seen that if there is a problem associated with the networks or with the system, it is related to the cables. So the routing cables, location of the cable closets where all the cables come together and they are, you know, uh, properly stored. The sites of the switch router installation should be explored before finalizing the plan. Detailed map of the cable layout should be taken by the auditor. And no faults should be there. Electrical cable and data cable should not cross each other to provide disturbance during data transfer. So, data cables are different, electrical cables are different. Both should not cross each other. Otherwise, there may be certain problem during data transfer. Fire protection. Proper fire extinguishers, fire alarms, smoke detectors are installed or not. Whether they are functioning properly or not. If there are water hydrants or if there are, uh, you know, gas fire extinguishers, they should perform properly. If not, concern. Insurance. All the critical computer components and data should be insured. This is very important. Annual maintenance contract AMC. Periodic maintenance of computer network is essential. For this purpose, it is required that the AMC should be awarded and renewed in time should be awarded and it should be renewed on time at the same time it is also essential that maintenance staff is available on time there should be a proper record of activities maintenance ke dauran kya kya activities perform hui thi uska bhi record hona chahiye is it clear yes next is the logical security what are we studying we are studying the concerns associated with safeguarding of assets so, if the logic is not secured, logical security means the user should be identified and only then they should be allowed access to the system. But if there is failure in this, logically only it is not secure. How can the assets be secure? Right? So, if the user fails to identify himself or herself, then the system should restrict the access. Login name, user ID, password are controls for this security. Secrecy and security of the user ID and password, different access levels rights and allocation of access rights to the concerned users in a proper manner. Creation of users, its records, users created for maintenance purpose and termination when the maintenance is complete. A user log state in the status report. The presence of dummy user in the system are some points which require consideration when concerned with logical security. 
the next point is data integrity so this is also one of the main objectives of auditor that the data should be accurate no modifications no unauthorized alteration deletion should be possible in the data so what are the concerns associated with data integrity number one is data processing controls the application uh, data input controls i'm sorry so the largest number of controls are present at the time of data entry whatever data is entered in the computer is authorized is secure or not because if the data is not secure not safe then the processing will be inaccurate okay data entry is also a major area for int intentional fraudulent activity in it involves the addition deletion modification or alteration of the input transactions or data hence is auditor should minutely check the efficiency and effectiveness both of the data input controls next is the data processing controls whether the data is processed in the correct manner or not the start of the system and the day end activities is carried on by an authorized personnel or not because day end ke time pe jo systems ko band karna hota hai jo systems ko lock karne whether it is being done by the appropriate personnel or not next is patch program patch program it is it uses the file structure of the existing database files and is capable of effecting changes in a data file it bypasses the proper menu access controls provided by the application software and does not leave a audit trail so this is very important to check that it will bypass the entire system and will no will leave no audit evidence so checking of these patch programs is very important therefore the is auditor should verify that only approved programs are loaded in the system and the application programs are identical with the list of approved programs jo list hai ki ye programs installed hai un list se sare programs match hone chahiye there should be no program present which is not approved no program should be installed in the system which is not approved next is purging of the data files purging of the data files meaning pruning or deleting the files of belonging to the old periods which are not necessarily of any use right now but before data pruning the auditor should ensure that there are proper facilities of data backup okay proper data backup of the entire directory should be made next point is the data backup data backup should be taken off site or on site it can be taken off site that means somewhere apart from the site of the organization or it can be taken on site also the backup is one of the measures of business continuity plans and is also required for archiving the old records that we are not using any more but we may use it in later stages we might use it in some future period so we are taking a backup of the same backup can be taken in hard disk cd roms and uh, floppy drives and uh, pen drives etc okay the last one is restoration of data the sixth point restoration means we have taken the backup and now we are restoring restoration will be done only when uh, there is a loss of data due to an accidental hazard or uh, due to some intentional virus attack the data has been lost corrupted in that case we need to restore so to achieve the objective of data integrity auditor ko ensure karna hoga ye sari facilities present hai ya nahi hai the next point is business continuity planning business continuity planning means in case of an accidental hazard or an uh, intentional attack malware virus whether the company whether the organization has a plan of data backup has a plan to continue its business further okay so disruption of operations can occur because of two types of problem first some minor problems like power failure ups failure server failure cable fault etc second types of disruptions are fire flood virus attacks bomb blast etc business continuity plan is prepared to recover from all such kinds of interruptions it relates to a higher level of failure so auditor here should examine the awareness of the staff regarding the execution of the business continuity plan in case of emergency and also comment upon its effectiveness bcp is required to satisfy short medium and long term recovery okay there are three methods of recovery here namely cold warm and hot backup sites cold warm and hot 
a cold site is where a computer room a computer room is provided in which the equipment can be installed when needed so a computer room de diya yahan pe agar zarurat padi kisi din koi disaster aa gaya koi attack ho gaya to yahan pe computer system install kar sakte hain that is a cold site what is a warm site a further advanced version a warm site is a computer room which has all the equipments installed but now here you can just load all the softwares and applications which you need so one step ahead of the uh, cold site and hot site a hot site is one where original installation is duplicated and ready to use when a disaster occurs entire ओरिजिनल लोकेशन का डुप्लीकेशन है कभी भी डिजास्टर हुआ कोई अनसर्टेंटी इमरजेंसी आई वी कैन शिफ्ट देर दैट्स अ हॉट साइट आउटपुट रिपोर्ट्स सो यू नो देर अ प्रिंसिपल इन कंप्यूटर्स एंड दैट इज वी कॉल गी गो गार्बेज इन गार्बेज आउट सो इफ यू गिव इन गार्बेज द डेटा दैट यू हैव एंटर्ड एज इनपुट इज रबिश मीनिंग लेस दैट इज गार्बेज द आउटपुट रिपोर्ट दैट यू विल गेट विल ऑल्सो बी rubbish meaningless that is garbage right so reports and printouts the data generated in the computer system ensure the correctness of the inputs and processing reports are also important to ensure that the application system programs serve the needs of the organization clear the is auditor should scrutinize output reports on a sample basis to identify the trend the quality of follow up and the control exercised by the management so what are we studying we are studying over here the business continuity plan version control data integrity will be maintained only when the version of the software used is latest and updated otherwise version ke wajah se bhi processing mein kabhi kabhi problems aa jati hain and virus protection what is a virus just like we have viruses in our body there are viruses in computer they replicate themselves and damage the files stored the data stored in the computer so to protect the systems from the viruses there should be what there should be an antivirus software now this antivirus software should be updated it should be from a good manufacturer and whenever any external device is attached to the computer it should be checked and scanned for viruses so this antivirus software should be there the next objective is system effectiveness so to check this we need to see that the overall quality of work is improving okay user friendly has system the is auditors should judge how effective the system is in accomplishing the goals effectiveness means budgeted output is matching with the actual output or not and system efficiency we should give the minimum input and get the maximum output kharcha kam lagao benefit zyada lo okay the is auditor should examine whether every computer asset is put to the maximum operational capacity or not for example the auditor has seen there are 500 computer systems but 30 of them are not in use that means the systems are not efficient okay no, not every asset is put to the maximum potential use the last is organization and administration that means the roles and responsibilities to the it personnel they should be assigned according to their expertise according to their skill sets because if the users who are using the systems are not efficient how can the outputs that are being generated be efficient okay so computer personnel should do their work completely timely accurately and that too with minimum resources they should proper placement of computer personnel based on their aptitude skill knowledge is very important computer personnel should be used effectively and efficiently all right so for doing this segregation of duties job description proper training to the staff dual control aspect in performing important operations dual control means control will be exercised two times if i am performing a task my work will be checked twice that is dual control a designated system administrator with suitable backup arrangement etc are important points that need to be considered staff rotation uh training login name all these are to be checked by the auditor clear so that is all with uh, this chapter i have al i already gave you the topics that we'll be covering 
you can see so we have already done meaning of is audit we have done steps in is audit the difference between security audit and risk assessment so this you can say uh, information this is I, it security audit okay this one is steps in it security audit then we did the audit framework provided as per rbi what are the controls cyber security and cyber forensics difference we had done i told you there's a question in the mqp based on this we did the objectives of the is audit we did scope of is audit today we again did the is audit approaches cats is audit methodologies we did subsystem factoring and finally the framework for conducting is audit there was a question based on cyber security and cyber forensics. I told you there's a, there was a question based on IS audit approaches and also the IS audit methodologies. Planning the audit, test of control, tests of balances. All right. I hope now you will find it easier to study this chapter and you will get a flow of how to study because I have divided the topics very clearly, very nicely for you. If you still have any queries, don't hesitate to put down in the comment section below and if you found the video helpful do share it with your friends thank you so much guys for watching and all the best for your exams